Intel's TDP has long been questioned, but this particular generation puts the 95 watt TDP under fire as users noticed media outlets measuring power consumption at well over 100 watts on most boards. It isn't uncommon to see the 9900K at 150 watts or more in some AVX workloads like Blender, thus far and away exceeding the 95 watt number. Aside from TDP being an imperfect specification for power, there's also a lot that isn't understood about it, including by motherboard manufacturers, apparently. All manufacturers are exceeding Intel guidance for the turbo boosting duration in some way, which is causing the uncharacteristically high power consumption that produces unfairly advantaged performance results. The other end of this is that the 9900K looks much better in some tests, but it also looks a lot hotter in thermal tests with the lack of turbo duration guidance. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the VU71 enclosure. The VU71 is a full tower case that's capable of fitting three video cards in most configurations. It's also one of the better cooling cases in our recent case testing bench lineup. The VU71 has hinged tempered glass doors on either side that make it easy to open and show off. And it comes with at least one rain fan, though you can get the RGB version if you prefer. Learn more at the link in the description below. Getting into this then, as a reminder, we had a power draw chart during our streaming benchmarks in the 9900K review. You might remember that in that chart, the 9900K sort of boosted up in power consumption and eventually dropped down to 95 watts or thereabouts, where it stayed for the duration of the test. And that is expected performance based on the specs that Intel has put out. But in most workloads, it turns out, with other motherboards, or even with the same one that we use, but with different settings, the Intel CPU far and away exceeds that 95 watt number. It'll go up to 150 or even 200 watts in some semi-stock scenarios with different motherboards. This comes down to a few things, primarily to motherboard vendors or manufacturers exiting Intel guidance, and it's them doing so without really telling anyone, so you have to be savvy enough to figure it out. And then you need to figure out that it's happening on all the boards. So when you see this happening everywhere, you start to question your own sanity. Like, is, this, is it even wrong? If all the, the CPU is doing this power draw on every motherboard, then what is the spec? And that's what we're looking at today. So the ASUS board, when we tested it, we tested with XMP2, which is the default setting, not the optimized setting, and we chose no to the prompt, which disables MCE. Now this time, MCE is a bit different. It's sneakier. Instead of just going all core to the single core max turbo, which would be 5.0 gigahertz, it is instead going to uh, the correct all core turbo. So it looks fine. It looks like MCE is not even doing anything. But the sneaky part is that it's blasting the turbo duration with MCE disabled on the ASUS board, and this is the only one we've found so far that does it properly, disabled, it sets the correct turbo boost limitation for time, and that means that the power, after a fixed period of time, no more than 100 seconds, will throttle down to the 95 watt power limit. And that's something we need to define here as well. All the other boards, as you'll see in our testing today, violate this power limit, and that's where we get this huge discrepancy, and that's where the Intel 95 watt TDP that you all have pointed out is questionable at best. So first you need to know about power limits one and two. Power limit two is how much power the CPU can use in bursts. Intel's official document describes this as, quote, a threshold that if exceeded, the power limit two rapid power limiting algorithms will attempt to limit the spike above PL2. Power limit one is the maximum frequency under a sustained load given in watts. Intel's document describes this one as, quote, a threshold for average power that will not exceed, recommend to set to equal TDP power. PL1 should not be set higher than thermal solution cooling units. That's an exact quote from their document. In other words, Intel recommends a 95 watt setting, but does not mandate it. Once EWMA power, or exponential weighted moving average power, is roughly equal to power limit one, there is no more power budget for turbo boosting and frequency down clocks as a result of this. We have a chart for that one as well. That's when it steps down to power limit one levels, exhibiting the lower frequency we'll see in testing later. This is the Intel specification. If it were following what we're seeing on some motherboards, you'd actually instead see the power and frequency blasted at those same peak frequencies and PL2 levels that you're seeing in the chart. In the same image, TAU is the turbo time parameter, which is dependent on EWMA 
and follows the same curve, although there's a typo in there from Intel. Intel allows for up to 100 seconds of PL2 or infinite PL1. Power is allowed for PL4 to be 10 milliseconds max. By Intel spec, the hardware defaults for PL1 is 95 on an 8-core CPU or 119 watts for PL2 for the limited duration allowed, and that's also for an 8-core. So you can burst up to 119 watts with PL2 or even higher with PL4. But with PL4, it's never more than 10 milliseconds. With PL2, it's not supposed to be more than 100 seconds. And then finally, note that TDP is kind of of nebulous usefulness in general because as a number, it doesn't really mean a whole, no whole lot. It doesn't mean literal power consumption. It's, again, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit nebulous. It's, uh, Intel's measurement of TDP is more about cooler ability to dissipate heat than anything. It's not a literal power metric. It can be significantly different from the actual power metric, which makes it difficult to use. So we were talking to Shannon Robb, another reviewer about all of this from Bjorn 3D, and he saw similar stuff that we did. So let's get into the charts and look at what we found with the different motherboards for the turbo duration issue. Power consumption is the most important for this one, seen as it is a TDP rating discussion. We're measuring power in two places. We have EPS 12 volt measurements at the power supply cables via a current clamp. Then we also have hardware info software measurements. The two ensure that we have reliability and can trust the data between each measurement. We're also going to be showing the power within the first 30 seconds of load, which will better illustrate at what point any throttle kicks in. This chart shows a lot of range. First of all, none of these results involve manual overclocking. We only ever changed one or two settings, one of which would have been XMP. Out of all these results, there's only one that follows Intel's specification. That's the Asus Maximus 11 Hero with no selected to the enhancement prompt after enabling XMP. For this one, we measured about 98 watts down the EPS 12 volt cables, which is within reasonable margin of error for the 95 watt TDP specification, though TDP, again, isn't really a perfect number. This is within spec so far. For the first 30 to 60 seconds, we observe dwindling power consumption from 140 watts to 120 watts before eventually falling off to 98 watts. This is due to turbo boost duration policies, something we'll show in another chart coming up. And this is ultimately what all of the boards should look like for power metrics. Speaking of that other chart, for reference, here's what the frequency functionality looks like when operating under settings with MCE disabled via XMP2 and selecting the no prompt. This plot takes place over a 23 minute blender render or thereabouts. So this is a real world use case of the 9900K. Notice that there's a sharp fall off after about 30 seconds where average all core frequency plummets from 4.7 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz. Notice that the power consumption remains at almost exactly 95 watts for the entire test pegged to 94.9 watts and relatively flat. This corresponds to the right axis with frequency on the left. It sort of feels like an RTX flashback where we're completely power limited. The difference is that this is under the specification, despite the CPU clearly being capable of more. You'll see that the frequency picks up again when the workload ends, leaving us with unchallenged idle frequencies. Let's get that power chart back on the screen. Here's the weird thing. If you leave the ASUS board to just auto, without any form of XMP, without any MCE modifications whatsoever, then the multi-core enhancement feature is left to auto as well. This seems reasonable, but in this version of multi-core enhancement, instead of boosting to the maximum single core frequency, which is very obvious when done and violates spec, of course, ASUS is extending the turbo boost duration. That's a new form of MCE. It's tricky and it's well hidden. Rather than boost visibly different numbers, like applying the single core boost modifier to all cores, the board is allowing turbo to last ad infinitum. The fact that the board operates outside of spec when auto, but inside of spec when XMP is on and with no selected is a really odd choice, to say the least. You'd expect a more consistent policy with auto probably following the spec more closely, if anything. It seems as if ASUS hasn't decided if it wants to be within spec and lose to other boards or exit spec and exceed TDP. Let's get the EVGA outlier out of the way. This is what power consumption looks like when you completely disable Intel's turbo boost functionality. It's obviously awful, as you're not really supposed to do this. It runs the CPU way slower. 
This establishes, though, that turbo is within TDT specifications, of course, but only when turbo duration is properly controlled by the motherboard manufacturer. EVGA did not appear to have an MCE option of any kind and only had the normal turbo toggle. So we decided to use it as a vessel for testing that power consumption baseline with no turbo boosting whatsoever. Next, the other end of the chart shows the MSI Godlike with enhanced turbo explicitly enabled as pulling 192 watts down the EPS 12 volt cables. For reference, enhanced turbo is natively set to auto, which has an infinite turbo duration and violates TDP under all motherboard settings. Enabling enhanced turbo explicitly will boost all core frequency to 5.0 gigahertz and is basically a new version of MCE. It is, however, sort of off by default in that auto and off are the same thing and on boosts a single core frequency across all cores. So really it's off and auto violate the turbo boost duration spec and then on is a user activated function that pre overclocks it. That's the real meaning. If we highlight the complete auto MSI configuration, no changes at all, that has us at 150 watts draw, not anywhere close to the power figures cited by Intel. Technically, this makes MSI the ones at fault, but we don't know if there are any behind the scenes politics that could influence things. MSI also exits spec with enhanced turbo set to auto, which keeps the 4.7 gigahertz ratio, but also removes the turbo duration limit. Disabling enhanced turbo explicitly leaves us in the same spot. Turbo durations still have no power limit, and the power is still at about 150 to 155 watts. There's, there's no limit within the duration that one would expect by Intel spec. Instead, it's basically infinite. Here's the frequency versus time plot when MSI's godlike is involved. For this setup, the ASUS board is still set to follow spec and has MCE disabled. The MSI board is under its auto enhanced turbo settings, which are the same as its disabled enhanced turbo settings. In this example, the MSI board is holding strong to 4735 MHz, which is violating the spec in multiple ways, sort of cheating. For one, VCLK is 100.8, which we already discussed. For two, the turbo duration limit is removed under these auto settings, and all settings actually, and so it holds a higher ratio. Power draw is also higher, pegged to 152 watts instead of 95 from ASUS, and that extra 60 watts goes a long way toward performance. Back to power one more time, with ASUS selecting yes to the prompt, puts us at around 142 watts, right around where the others are. At this point, the only difference between EVGA, MSI, and ASUS is the automatic voltage provision. EVGA has the tightest V-core and so draws less power, as you can see in these power numbers, but also is exiting the turbo duration spec. For reference, our initial review was done with the correct setting. We use the ASUS motherboard with XMP2 and no selected at the prompt, and so our results follow the Intel spec and guidelines. That's because we learned about this last time with Z370. If we used a different motherboard, though, our results would be higher, and our thermals would be higher significantly, and our power would also be higher. So that's where some of the confusion came in a couple weeks ago from the reviews. We have two performance tests to look at. The first one is a truncated test, rendering our GN logo scene at only 20% resolution. You can see the normal GN logo render on the screen now. It's been playing for a little bit. And this is what the scene, uh, the final result looks like. It's a real world use case of these higher end CPUs. It's one frame from our intro animation to this very video. The second performance test is the normal 50% resolution render, which takes about half an hour even on a good CPU. For the 20% resolution test, the shorter one, you'll see that only three items are outside of the error margins and are quickly identifiable. At the low end of the chart, the EVGA FTW with turbo completely disabled is obviously bad and not something you should be using, but we did that. That wasn't an EVGA default spec or setting. That's where Intel would be at 65 watts with the 9900K. More critically, the ASUS Hero with MCE completely disabled, selecting no at the XMP prompt, performs noticeably worse than the other motherboards. ASUS gets punished for partially following Intel's spec, though their auto setting still exceeds it. So we can't give ASUS too much credit here. They're not really the good guys. It's just they were less bad than some of the others. At 4.2 minutes to render the logo, we're taking 11% longer to render the logo than the rough average of 3.8 minutes for the other boards. Here's the full render. We only have a few of the 9900K references on here as it takes so long to run this test. It's just enough to make a point. Our original review used the correct settings to follow Intel spec, and so is the worst of the 9900K results. That's at 25.5 minutes, 
which is just ahead of the R7 2700 at 4.2 gigahertz. It's about a minute faster. It's about three minutes faster than the 8700K at five gigahertz and significantly slower than the 7900X 10 core CPU stock. With the MSI Godlike and EVGA FTW extended turbo durations, we saw render time reduced by about 9.3%. That's noteworthy and diminishes the gap between the 7900X while widening the gap between the 2700 and 2700X stand-in at 4.2 GHz. Finishing in 23 minutes instead of 25.5 might not sound like a lot, but it's all about scale. If you're an animator, you're likely rendering thousands of frames. A 10% requirement reduction in time per frame will add up very fast, and so it's misleading to show performance numbers outside of the spec. At the same time, though, if all of the boards violate the spec, maybe it isn't misleading. If that's the reality, then the inaccuracy is in showing the power figures, not in the performance figures. Either way, both cannot be simultaneously accurate. We'll leave thermals for another piece. We have those as well, but we're going to push that with some other key insights that we ran, some extra tests into another content piece. This one, though, it, you should have a pretty good idea of where things stand now. Clearly, the one instance that we've seen thus far, and we, there are boards we didn't show here, but ASRock Tai Chi follows the same behavior as the others, except for the ASUS MCE off one. So the ASUS board is the only one, when you physically go in there and enable XMP and disable MCE, that's the only one that really follows the spec everyone expects when they see 95 watts. That's what we used in our review. We had experience with this from Z370. But if you didn't have that board, or as a user, you don't buy that board, you're never going to be at that number. And Unless you have that board and other boards, you really can't compare them and figure out this is clearly what they meant when they said 95 watts. So ASUS is following the, so the spec to some degree. They're not angels here, though. They're also violating it with auto settings, which just seems completely backwards. But either way, at some point, you're left asking, who's really at fault here? Because Intel has guidance. That document we showed earlier is from Intel. They've set guidance. They've set parameters. but they're not necessarily being strict enough with them, and so motherboard manufacturers are doing whatever they want. Now, apparently, Intel is going to be more strict this generation, which is why you see ASUS buckling down on it, where previously they didn't. And in fact, ASUS was responsible for a lot of the sort of trickery that happened in previous generations. So Intel might be starting to crack down on this. But for now, can you blame the motherboard manufacturers, or do you blame Intel? Because motherboard manufacturers are doing whatever they can to make their boards look better than the other, but at the same time, it makes Intel look better, sort of unfairly. Uh, so really, what should probably happen is Intel should drop the 95 watt number that's used and cited everywhere, since it only applies under those certain scenarios described earlier, and the boards don't really follow it, and instead cite higher performance with a higher power consumption, because those two go together, as opposed to the basically impossible to achieve power consumption under all of these other motherboards parameters, except for one in one specific setting, and, uh, and the higher performance. They're, right now, they're doing two things in opposition to each other when they need to be doing two things either together proportionately rather than inversely, which is what Intel is trying to do with their spec. So it's a question of who do you blame, Intel for not being strict enough with the guidance that they do have, or the motherboard vendors for sidestepping the guidance constantly and running basically out of spec. And you're left here with basically just Asus in one setting doing the spec that, like running at spec, running where they should be. So if it's just one under one setting, then is it even a spec? Is it even guidance? Because it's just making ASUS look bad at that point instead of uh, what everyone else is doing. So that's it for this one. Hopefully that answers some questions as to what, what's the deal with TDP. Why do they say 95 watts and it's not 95 watts? The answer is turbo duration. And you're allowed to boost outside of TDP to like 120 watts or thereabouts. Uh, it's 1.25 times PL1, but it's not supposed to be sustained. And that's where these manufacturers are kind of cheating. Uh, and then PL3 and PL4 can be exceeded also. So that's it for this one. You can help us out directly with this type of content by going to store.gamersnexus.net and picking up one of our products like this shirt or the mod mats. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus helps out there as well or get access to our behind the scenes videos pushing two this week. And subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.